Next up is to make your measuring indicator. Remove the spine retainer and the spine rod. You'll find once you've taken the retainer off, the whole thing will slide apart. Mark the cuts. The first one is just below the zero line here. Then on the smaller piece, chop the larger arm off and the smaller arm and the small little knobbly bit there on the side. For the first cut, don't cut on or above that zero line, cut just below it. Even that end up with the zero markings. Then when you clean up the edges, file it onto that marking. Cut and file that nodule level to the body. Then on the smaller piece, cut those other two arms off level and square. And this is what you should end up with. As they slide together, they should grab a little bit, not sliding easily all the way through. Back over to your clear vinyl tubing, which you've already drilled a hole in it. Mark and cut it about a centimetre smaller than the body of the caliper. Handy hint, a fork steerer cutting guide makes a nice square cut. Then file that cut edge nice and smooth. Now insert that small bolt from inside the 20mm coupler. Using a pair of needle nose pliers certainly helps. Screw on the clear tubing like this and then insert the nut to hold it on. Again using a pair of needle nose pliers gets it in there. Once the thread takes you can screw it on with a spanner. After a while the bolt will move so you'll probably need to hold the bolt head while you do the rest of it up. Now you can put the knob in the other hole on the other side of the PVC coupler with the nut. Make sure you get the beveled edges facing inwards and lengthways along the coupler. Once again try the coupler onto the rod and if it doesn't go on chances are it's the head of the small bolt which is impinging on the rod. So file the head of the bolt a bit flatter so that the whole unit slides along the rod nicely. And of course when you do up that knob it locks onto the rod nice and firmly. If you find the coupling is still grabbing regardless, give the corners of the rod a bit of a file. And do all four of course. Once you've filed it, just smooth it off a bit. Some emery paper. Put it together and try it again. Time to put a zero line for the pointer. It's marked on the coupler and it will be exactly in line with the bottom of the rod. Because measurements will be taken from the bottom of the rod, you'll need to have the zero of the pointer in line with it. If it deviates from that position, you'll get a wrong reading. So looking at the rod squarely, put some marks exactly on the right spot. Use a straight edge and mark a line across. Then follow that line a few times with a sharp knife and that will make it a permanent mark. With a permanent marker, try and get some of that ink or paint into the line and that'll make it easier to see. Clean off the excess with some isopropyl alcohol, a clean rag and it'll leave a nice, clear, fine mark. Now get your valve stem and cut it at 20 millimeters in length and clean up any burrs from the cut. So here's your coupler, that's the locking knob, this is the hole where the nut and the bolt and the clear plastic tube goes, there's your zero line and up the top here on this side is where we're going to drill the hole for the valve. Temporarily we'll slide the coupler onto the rod and tighten it up. Mark half the width of the rod, so it's just a fraction below 10. Pretty much all French valve caps are just a smidge over 7 millimeters in diameter. So the centre of the valve will be half of 7, which is 3.5. So come in 3.5, dead centre of the rod, and put a mark. Drill a small pilot hole exactly on that mark. Then the next size up drill bit, then the next size up, and your final drill bit will be so that the valve just fits through the hole nicely. Secure the valve into the hole, put the valve cap on and check if it's dead level with the end of the coupler. If yours ends up like mine, it's a fraction of a mil short, you can elongate the hole outwards. 
check again and here you can see the valve cap is perfectly level now but the stem nuts are sticking out a little bit now that may not matter but to be fastidious we're going to file them flat so that they're perfectly level now when you assemble it the nuts are nice and flush with the end of the coupler and of course the valve cap is nice and flush as well so when you butt up against a surface like the beginning of your handlebars the end of the coupler indicates the exact measurement. Hammer the square end cap into the rod makes it look nice and finished. First clean the face that you're going to stick the tape measure onto with isopropyl alcohol. The end of the rod that the T goes into is the beginning of the tape measure or your zero mark. Don't cut the tape at zero because you're likely to catch the end of it on something and begin to lift the tape off. So cut it about five millimeters in. Now those corners will be sharp. So again, you don't want to catch it on something or begin to lift the tape. So cut and round the corners at this end as well as the finishing end. And at the other end of the tape measure, cut it at about 950 mils. Now make your mark at exactly 10 millimeters in from the beginning of the rod. Begin peeling off the backing paper off of the tape and then line up 10 millimeters on the tape measure with the mark that you've made on the rod. Continue laying the tape onto the rod. Go slowly, otherwise you might end up with a crooked tape measure on the rod. Once it's all on, press it down firmly with a soft cloth. The pointer has a fine steel rod for a spine and you don't want to go poking your eye out with that, so remove it. If the rule slides through the body too easily, there's an easy fix. Cut a thin strip of electrical tape and put it in this part of the body of the pointer. Now the rule should slide through the body, but hold its position when you're not pushing it. Putting everything together, it should look like this, and you're ready to go. The adjusting knob on the side of the sliding indicator, will mention that in a minute. Before I did it, it was like going down in five millimetres, too much. You just, a millimetre makes a huge difference, yeah. like it did to me. It's just slightly too high in the nose. So you tilted it how much? I put it about three or about three millimeters down, and then after that ride, I found it was too low. So <laughs> then I put it up. So you really do have to tune your seat into your bum. Yeah. Just that bit, and, and it made the difference. A huge difference. That millimeter is just amazing. Yeah. It's like today, beautiful, no problems at all. So. so small changes can make big differences with regards to the body. For instance, some people have different core strengths. Other people carry more weight on their shoulders and others are more slim built. That's your physical body. It's a different subject altogether, even though it's very important to consider. Now, the things you can readily change, which we're considering, of course, in this video is on your bike. For instance, just the frontal area, your head stem length, the width of your bars, the shape of your bars, where your levers sit on your bars. And then you have other things, for instance, your shoes. Do you have inner soles in your shoes, different thicknesses? Are you using arch supports? Then there's the cleat. It's different cleats have different cleat stack heights. They all affect performance as well. Then you even go down to chamois in your nicks. Yes, from 0.5 to two millimeter difference in some chamois makes a big difference. So with all these things you can record, and that's just a few to start with, how are you going to remember all this? Well, you need some way of recording it and that way you have a future reference to go by so that when you've got your position beautifully tweaked and everything's happy, honky dory on your bike, you're comfortable as anything and you perform really well, you need to write all these things down, some way of recording them for future reference. So if you do make a change somewhere and it makes a worse difference, you can always go back to the original position or whatever it was that you changed. Regardless of the angles of your frame, the sizing of your bike, the wheelbase between your wheels, the bars and stem, all the things that you can adjust on the bike, that can all be adjusted, no problem. There's one thing that stays the same though, your body. <laughs> Except for maybe one aspect, and that is your flexibility, because just some days you're more flexible than others, and that can have a big bearing on how comfortable and how you perform on your bike. 
So don't go saying, ah, oh, I'll get used to fitting on the bike, my knee pain, my back pain, my numb arm, my tingly fingers. No, it's not about you fitting the bike, it's about making the bike fit you. And in order to record measurements, you need to measure them first, don't you? So that's where your fit tool comes in. The three most important measurements this tool is going to make for you is your height, your length, and the tilt of your seat. Now there are other measurements this tool can make as well, but they're the most important ones. Here's a sample of a paper which will help you record your measurements. You can also use your tool if you just want to compare some dimensions. For instance, if you've got two bikes and you want to compare the length, then you can put it on seat like that, adjust it so it's exactly right, lock it up, and then take it to your other bike and plonk it straight on, and it'll tell you if you're five or 10 or a couple of centimeters out. So very handy for comparing dimensions, and you can do that to any dimensions on your bike. Another thing you might want to do is copy your position. Transpose your exact position on this bike to another bike. Now, in order to do that, of course, you're going to take all the vital measurements and a few other minor ones, perhaps, and you're going to write them down, and then you go over to your other bike that you're setting up, and you try and adjust things exactly to those measurements. Now, there's a few things, issues that you need to keep in mind. For instance, if you have a seat with a single bolt or a, a mechanism which, uh, when you unloosen it, the seat not only tilts, but it also moves back and forth at the same time. That can be awkward because when you make one movement, you just say you tilt your seat down a little bit, whoops, your seat slides forward a fraction as well. It can be annoying. Um, the same thing can happen to uh, your handlebar area or a few other aspects as well. So you need to take your time, and it's a bit like, I've heard the illustration, like a spider's web. If you touch a spider's web, the rest of the points where they join also move accordingly to their position a little bit. So a little bit of a tweak here can make a difference over here. Your height can make a difference to your tilt and all sorts. So just take your timing setting up. If you can get a seat post like this where you can lock the fore and aft and then still do your tilt or vice versa, that will certainly uncomplicate your copying procedure. Another example is when you tilt your seat. If you push your nose down, the back of the seat comes up. Because your seat bones are toward the back of the seat, your sit bones come up as well. So what have you done? You've effectively increased the height. <laughs> now, if you tilt your seat back, then you come down. Your sit bones come down and you decrease the height. So there you go. This is spider's web illustration. When you change one parameter, it affects others as well. Right, let's get on with using the quick fit tool. Find the beginning of the widest part of your saddle and mark a horizontal line across the saddle. With your sit bone template, come 5 to 7 millimeters in front of that line and mark your sit bone points. Or you can use the alfoil on the saddle method to find your sit bone points. And then join those points with a second line. Remove the J bolt. and remove the pointer. You can also tilt this so it's out of the way. The filed end of your T-piece goes in your bottom bracket cap. Turn your tape measure around so it's facing outwards. You can read it easier that way. And also make sure that it's firmly on the T-section down the bottom, otherwise you'll get an inaccurate measurement. Now you can either have it so that your pointer is at the top and your adjusting knob is pointing forward, or you can turn it around the other way and the adjusting knobs at the back and your pointers at the bottom. The important thing is you take the reading from where the pointer surface is. Then just slide your slider down so that the pointer is right on the spot of your sit bone, exactly on there, then tighten that knob up. You can also remove the valve cap and assuming that the valve core is nice and straight, you'll get an even more accurate reading. So we're in the 700 millimeter range. 779, I reckon we could make that. First thing to calibrate, the distance between the center of your bottom bracket axle to the zero measure on the rod. And it happens to be seven millimeters. For the valve, if you're resting the edge of the cap on the sit bone point, you add zero. 
If the peak of the valve cap is resting on the sit bone point, you'll need to add 3.5 millimeters. Chances are it'll be somewhere in between, nominally two millimeters. That's why if you measure with the valve cap removed, it'll be pretty much exactly three millimeters. So it's up to you how you want to discern your valve cap calibration. For me, I went with the valve cap removed, so just add three millimeters. That makes it total height of 789. Now, unlike height, the length and tilt of your seat measurements are going to be affected by your handlebar position. So you need to lock your handlebars so that they're facing forward or your front wheel in line with your frame exactly. Now, easiest way to do that is just with a pedal strap. I'll just show you how to do that. Lock your front wheel. So do a figure of eight, one loop around the frame and one loop around the wheel. When tightening the buckle, make sure it's over the rim, that way it'll be flat and also prevent scratching your frame. Now measuring your length, it's easier for the tape measure to be up the top, so facing upwards. So you need to turn your T sideways like that, or you can remove it altogether. And for your pointer, it has to be at the front. So it hits your handlebars and you take the reading from the front. Put the beginning of the rod on your sit bone point or the line, it doesn't really matter as long as the rod is parallel with your top tube and it's going directly to your handlebar. Slide the coupler so that the valve hits the beginning of your handlebar and then lock the holding knob. Look straight down on the measure and you don't need to calibrate and there's the value. Because you've locked the coupler, you can also lift the tool away from your bike to read the measure. Of course, you can also read to the center of your bar or to the front of your bar. Now you can also measure length from the nose of your seat to your bar or from the back of your seat to your bar. So if you want to do that, the back of the seat to the bar, push in your T-piece, make sure it's all the way in, put it at the back of the seat and it'll hook on. And then you just do the same, move your pointer till it touches your bar and then take your reading. For the front of the seat, it's easy just to take the piece out because you get a more accurate reading from the zero point at the beginning of the tool there. And again, it's going to be shorter, so you bring that pointer back, lock it up when it hits the bar, and you've got your reading. Now it's nice if you can use the same seat for all of your bikes. That way it's consistent and easy to measure, but it's usually not the case, is it? As in my case here. So I've got two bikes identically set up and they've got different saddles though. So if you measure from the sit bone point to the handlebar, and on this one, they're identical to the millimeter, which is great. But now let's measure from the back of the seat to the handlebar, and on this one, it's longer than that bike. And the same with the nose of the seat to the handlebar, it's also longer on this bike than that bike. And the reason is because when you measure the seat measurement from the back or the front, it's measuring the seat shape, it's not measuring you. To measure you sitting on the bike is your sit bone point. So always measure from your sit bone point to wherever you're measuring to. And that's much more accurate. It's actually measuring you, not the seat shape. To measure the tilt, put your coupler on the rod so the pointer is pointing upwards, the valve stem upwards, the knob is facing you and you can read your measurements there on your side. If you're standing on the other side, of course, the measurements will be upside down and the knob will be on the other side, but that's fine depending on which side you stand. I'm on the chain wheel side. Then you put your indicator on, your little measuring indicator in. Make sure the zero on the indicator is onto the line, on the zero line on the coupler, so that's nice and measured up as well. Then you put the beginning of your tool, your zero, onto not the sit bone point, but the sit bone line toward the middle of your seat. Not in the exact middle of your seat and across the nose, because you'll find it'll be over your head stem. And if you've got a head stem clamp, it'll be measuring to the clamp, and you don't want that. You want to measure to where you hold on to your handlebar. So put it slightly offside on your saddle, but exactly on your sit bone line, across the middle of the nose of your seat, and then you'll find it will be diagonal across the top bar of your frame, and under the knob in the slider and make sure it's hovering over the handlebar. Put your indicator down so that it's in the middle of your bar. And it's important to be in the middle of your bar because that's the highest point of your bar, isn't it? Especially on a round bar. If you've got an integrated flat bar, it should still be pretty close to being the highest point in the middle of the bar. So 
Once it's there, you can lock it up with the knob there, the locking knob. And then when you hold it here on your seat, don't clamp too hard or push too hard on your seat because you'll be compressing the uh, cushioning, the foam in your seat, and you'll be raising the level of the rod at the front and you'll get an inaccurate reading. So just hold it nicely there so that nothing wobbles around too much. And then you can touch the rod and the indicator will come up or touch the top of the indicator and it'll go down to the handlebar and just hover on the handlebar, which is what you want. So if you want to raise it, you tap the rod. If you want to put it down, you tap the top of the indicator. So you tap the top, so it's just sitting on the handlebar, just sitting there nicely, and that's your reading. So you can bend down and take your reading, or if you've got the lock nut, which I'll explain in a minute, little lock nut, do it up, and it will hold the indicator, and then you can read it. So that's your tilt reading. Of course, your seat bone tilt is the most important measurement you can make, but you can also measure the tilt of the entire seat, which can be handy sometimes, especially if you're just putting a seat on and or the seat pole in or something like that, and you're just mucking around completely on a macro level, huge movements, and you don't know where you are. So to get yourself in the approximate area, you can measure the whole seat just to start with. So that's why this little bolt at the back, put it on, use your J-bolt, hook it onto the back of the seat. Again, diagonally across, and just tighten it up. Don't tighten it up too much because it'll compress the foam again. Just tighten so it sits there across the middle of your nose and then adjust it up the front end. So again, the same thing over the middle of your handlebar and you can do the same thing, tap, 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 and tap, 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 till you get it right and then take your reading. Now one important point to remember about tilt is your weight distribution on the seat. Try and keep it as central as possible and the seat rails in the middle of your seat clamp as much as possible. If you've got too much rail sticking out the back or you put too much weight on the back or both, then what's going to happen is the seat's going to go down at the back and up at the front on the nose and you're going to get a seat tilt when you sit on it. So when you get off the seat, it looks level or back to its measurement, but when you sit down, the seat actually tilts a little bit back and vice versa. If you've got your seat forward on the rails, a lot of rails sticking out at the front or you're sitting on the nose, then what's happened is your weight's going to push down on the front and your seat is going to ever so slightly tilt forward and that's going to affect as well. So try and keep it central as you can, as much rail at the front and the back equal as possibly can. That way when you sit on your seat, it's not going to move very, very much. It's not going to move much in tilt. Now if you've not done seat tilt measurements or you've got no idea where to start with the seat tilt on your bike, then a good place to start is textbook which is get a dead level seat and for a male it's the nose up one degree and for a female it's nose down one degree so just a slight little bit so you can just see it tilting down for female and slightly up for a male you don't have to be exactly on that so just take that go for a ride and if you need to make alterations of course make alterations but that's just the beginning point for you it's a good starting point and of course with tilt, again, the spider's web, wherever you touch, for instance, if you have your handlebars slightly lower, then you're going to alter your tilt, aren't you? You're going to come forward, hence you're tilting your pelvis downwards, so you might need to tilt your nose down. So if you've got a time trial bike and your bars are lower, then you may need to put your nose down further. And you'll see that on a lot of pros bikes. They put the nose down when they have a really low front end. And of course, vice versa. And if you shorten everything, then of course, if you shorten yourself, you're going to come back like this and you're going to tilt your pelvis again, back again. So you might need to tilt the nose up a little bit or the back down, whichever way you look at it. So again, that's the spider's web for you. Whatever you move, it's going to affect the seat tilt and the seat tilt affects everything else. So there you go. But persevere and you'll get there. So there's your most important measurements you can make. And of course, you can use this tool to make other measurements as well. And I'll just show you some. Again, measuring from your seat, you can go to your lever hood, to the center of your A-head bolt, to the end of your drops on your handlebars, your rear wheelbase. When measuring this, remove the valve cap so you can insert the valve directly into the through axle to get an accurate measurement. The front center, of course, make sure your front wheel is straight with the frame. Then you add your front center here with the wheelbase you measured at the rear and you get your total wheelbase. Bottom bracket to the bottom of the nose of your seat if you want to. Most frame measurements, including seat tube height and top tube length. Width at your lever hoods and the width of your bars at the drops. 
and any other measurements that you might come up with yourself. And for whatever measurements you make, be sure to do the calibrations for either that end, that end, or both ends, whichever you're using in whichever instance there is. Otherwise, your measurements will be out. So there you go. It's in no way a professional tool, but it will certainly put you in the ballpark figure with an accurate measurement, much more so than a bubble level and a tape measure. Of course, the real way of testing your bike fit is to get out and ride your bike. Now, I don't mean on a trainer, that's all very well, but get out there and ride your bike because it's your legs and your backside that tell you what's going on and your comfort and your efficiency. So ride your bike and that will tell you where you're at. It's taken a fair while to think about how to make this tool and every time I come up with something, I changed it along the way, so it's taken quite some time. Anyhow, it's not perfect, of course, so if you can make some changes, suggested changes, some ideas you have, or completely rearrange the tool altogether, please do so, let us know. A few little things I thought of, was which I've done here, I put a quick release on the quick release skewer, the old quick release days, between the knob and the body here of the coupler, and that kept out the knob and the uh, stopper from the slider so that when you took it on and off it was a lot easier it didn't didn't grab that was one thing i did um, what you could do also um, is when the plastic bit here with the bolt you could put a bit of loctite on the nut so that when you turn this it doesn't undo or you could put the bolt when you drill it through the coupler make it so the bolt is tight take the knob out put a screwdriver in from the knob in and screw it in so it's quite tight a very tight fit and then when you put this in it won't move that's another suggestion and um, the other thing is you notice here i put the little dial on the side of the caliper all i did is just drill a hole put a bolt on and again another valve cap on top a clear one to match the clear pointer one and that way it either slides or when you do it up it grabs so that's a really good idea really easy to do another thing to add to it just got back from our ride and what come in the post is the digital caliper so let's put it on so do exactly the same as the analog caliper remove the spine in this case we cut it off cut off all the measuring tips file them flush to mount the caliper body to the coupler i use an electrical conduit mounting clip 32 mil it's got an open frontage so you've got access to the on and off and the zero buttons. Line up the bottom of the slider with the bottom of the rod, press zero and it's calibrated. I found it only slightly more accurate than the analog version, but certainly quicker and easier to read. But of course, you can keep on making things more and more complicated and difficult to make and more expensive if you want to. But my whole idea was to keep it as simple and easy to make for you. So regardless of all that, you can still get away with the basic tool. It works really, really well. But any suggestions, please, please put them in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you.